Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sangeeta Chaudhary once again and I welcome everybody, all my viewers and subscribers to my class today. Today I am going to discuss about a very important topic and it is very, uh, you know, very useful to know not only for doctors but for everybody that is alcoholic liver disease. As the name suggests, I am going to discuss about what does alcohol do to our liver and what happens. I will talk about the different aspects of alcohol and how much alcohol is necessary or how much alcohol if somebody drinks will cause uh, alcoholic liver disease or liver cirrhosis okay i'll discuss about the uh, different aspects and different symptoms of alcoholic liver disease followed by the management of liver disease okay i'll talk about the diagnosis and treatment of alcoholic liver disease in my upcoming classes, I am going to discuss about the complications of liver disease because alcoholic liver disease or liver cirrhosis has so many complications and the main management of uh, liver cirrhosis depends on the management of the complications of alcoholic liver disease or liver cirrhosis. Okay, so let's talk about the alcoholic liver disease. So first of all, if we look at epidemiology, there are almost 140 million people worldwide suffer from alcohol dependency. And I was talking about the significant alcohol intake. If daily intake is more than 60 gram per day in a male or if it is more than 20 gram per day in females, that it significantly increases the risk of cirrhosis. Steady, daily or persistent and heavy drinking are more harmful and risky than binge drinking or sporadic heavy drinking. That means uh, drinking every day or persistent drinking and heavy drinking every day, they are more harmful and risky than drinking sporadically or occasionally heavy drinking. Almost heavy drinkers, one fifth of them will develop alcoholic hepatitis and one fourth of them will develop liver cirrhosis so cirrhosis is the end point after which people develops different complications of liver cirrhosis we all have heard about the terminology of liver cirrhosis so from this slide we need to remember the significant amount of alcohol intake should be more than 60 gram per day in a male and more than 20 gram per day in a female to cause liver cirrhosis now let's look at the uh, functional and morphological concepts of liver lobule it is important because once we know what is a liver lobule then we will come to know the pathological aspects of alcoholic liver disease what does alcohol do in the liver now there is something known as morphologic liver lobule and functional liver lobule now what is morphological liver lobule okay morphological liver lobule is the hexagonal lobule it is this one okay this image it is hexagonal lobule where there will be a terminal hepatic venule at the center and in the periphery there will be portal tracts okay portal tracts uh, uh, the periphery of this lobule will be anchored with the portal tracts like this. So these are the portal tracts and this is the central portion of the morphological liver lobule that is terminal hepatic venule will be at the center. Now if you look at this image, okay, this is uh, this colorful image is the functional liver lobule. Functional liver lobule has three zone: zone one, zone two, and zone three. Zone one is a central zone where the portal tract lies. Okay, in the morphological liver lobule, portal tract lies at the periphery, whereas in the functional liver lobule, it lies at the center. So this is the zone one. The pink one is the zone one, and it is the highly oxygenated zone. Okay, so this is the most oxygenated zone. That is zone one. Okay, next comes zone 2. Zone 2 lies in between zone 3 and zone 1. So, there is red color one is zone 2. And zone 3 is the most peripheral portion that is the green color and it receives the least amount of oxygen and nutrition. It surrounds the terminal hepatic venule. So, functional liver level has three zones. Zone 1 which is highly oxygenated. Okay, zone 2 and zone 3. Zone 3 is the least oxygenated okay, among the three zones. So, this is about the liver lobule. Alcohol affects this liver lobule ultimately leading to liver cirrhosis. So, this is important to know. 
now what are the risk factors of alcoholic liver disease okay if i talk about the quantity of alcohol i have already talked about the alcohol intake should be almost for 10 to 20 years for the development of alcoholic hepatitis or cirrhosis in men 40 to 80 gram per day of ethanol produces fatty liver and 160 gram per day for 10 to 20 years causes hepatitis or cirrhosis only 15 percent of alcoholics they do develop alcoholic liver disease it's not like 100 percent of alcoholics will develop alcoholic liver disease so the data says 15 percent of alcoholics will develop alcoholic liver disease coming to gender so women exhibits increased susceptibility to alcoholic liver disease so if women are consuming less amount of alcohol per day also they will have a tendency to develop alcoholic liver disease for the significant amount of alcohol consumption for uh, uh, women is more than 20 gram per day okay that is uh, uh, there will be more than a uh, few drinks so two drinks per day is probably safe now hepatitis c it is one of the important risk factors hcv infection concurrent with alcoholic liver disease is associated with younger age for severity more advanced histology and decreased survival that means if hepatitis C is concurrent with alcoholic liver disease, that is more riskier or more dangerous. Genetics. Of course, genetics play important role in alcoholic liver disease. Fatty liver. Alcohol injury does not require malnutrition, but obesity and non-alcoholic fatty liver are risk factors. So, patients should receive vigorous attention to nutritional support. So these are about the risk factors most importantly the quantity of alcohol gender and uh, in the background of hepatitis c these are very important risk factors for the development of alcoholic liver disease now let's know a little bit about alcohol what is alcohol alcohol it is a large group of organic molecules it has a hydroxyl group hydroxyl group which is attached to a saturated carbon atom okay ethanol is a common form of alcohol which is used for drink so what people drink that is ethanol okay ethanol or ethyl alcohol the chemical formula is like this okay ch3 ch2 and oh so this is ethyl alcohol now how does alcohol gets metabolized in someone's body about 90 percent of absorbed alcohol is metabolized in the liver okay one gram of alcohol gives seven calories to somebody and alcoholic literally run on spirit they do not take about other foods they do not take uh, like carbohydrates or other uh, nutritional uh, foods they literally survives on alcohol those who are alcohol abusers one gram of alcohol gives seven calories but these are empty calories they do not provide any nutrition okay the empty calories provide only energy with no contribution to nutrition so that is important i will not go into the detail of the ethanol metabolism but just to mention that ethanol metabolism it occurs uh, some of the steps occurs in cytosol and some in mitochondria okay in the cytosol ethanol gets converted to acetaldehyde this acetaldehyde will be converted to acetic acid inside the mitochondria so both cytosol and mitochondria play its important role in the metabolism of ethanol and the ultimate uh, the ultimate end product is acetic acid pathogenesis of liver disease how alcohol damages the liver okay pathogenesis of liver damage it acts as a direct hepatotoxin okay direct injury to liver cells okay now intestinal derived endotoxin initiates a pathogenic process through toll like receptor 4 and tnf alpha that facilitates hepatocyte apoptosis and necrosis so necrosis and apoptosis of liver cell caused by oxidative stress hepatocyte injury and impaired regeneration and following chronic alcohol ingestion okay it's ultimately associated with stellate cell activation and collagen production okay so ultimately there will be activation of stellate cell there will be collagen production and this will ultimately lead to fibrosis okay of the uh, liver 
so what does it do it acts as a direct hepatotoxin okay and then it causes necrosis and apoptosis of liver cells by oxidative stress it causes impaired regeneration of the liver liver is something we know that it can regenerate by itself but it impairs the regeneration of the liver as well and ultimately there will be stellate cell activation and collagen production leading to fibrosis which ultimately leads to hepatic cirrhosis or liver cirrhosis now coming to the stages of ald okay alcoholic liver disease or ald it runs through different stages mainly three stages first of uh, uh, first stage will be stage of fatty liver okay then second it will be alcoholic uh, hepatitis stage of alcoholic hepatitis and then lastly there will be liver cirrhosis okay so what happens in fatty liver or hepatic steatosis this is alcohol related steatosis so there will be fat accumulation in zone 3 and zone 2 now we already know what is zone 3 and zone 2 from the uh, uh, you know functional lobule of the liver which you have already described then there will be macro vesicular droplets macro means big one big droplets of fat inside the liver second is alcoholic hepatitis so what does alcoholic hepatitis means what happens in alcoholic hepatitis there will be degeneration which is uh, specifically known as ballooning degeneration of hepatocytes there will be mallory bodies formation what is mallory body mallory body they are cytokeratine intermediate filaments accumulation inside the cell so there will be mallory body formation there will be giant mitochondria sclerosing hyaline necrosis and cholestasis so these are the features of alcoholic hepatitis like ballooning degeneration of hepatocytes then mallory body formation and there will be giant mitochondria cholestasis and hyaline necrosis so these are important okay last stage or the final one is liver cirrhosis which we all have heard about so liver cirrhosis uh, alcoholic liver cirrhosis usually causes micronodular cirrhosis micro as the name suggests small so there will be micronodular cirrhosis whole of the liver parenchymal architecture will be lost okay architecture cannot be identified and initially the nodule or the fibrotic nodules will be micronodular which may progress to macronodular okay means big nodule pattern so this is about the cirrhosis and why does it happen it happens because of the activation of stellate cell and then production of collagen ultimately which ultimately leads to fibrosis and then leading to micronodular liver cirrhosis now let's know about the dose equivalent of alcohol okay there are different varieties of alcohol we need to know the amount of alcohol which is there or the percentage or the gram of alcohol which is there in the different varieties of drink so uh, if we compare distant spirit 1.5 ounce means 10 gram okay wine 4 rounds means 10 gram of alcohol beer one can it contains 10 gram of alcohol so 1.5 ounce of distal spirit is equivalent to 4 ounce of wine which is equivalent to 1 can of beer that equals to 10 gram of alcohol that is one drink of alcohol so we need to remember that because when we take history from a patient we need to know what type of uh, drink the patient is uh, uh, drinking and then we need to calculate the amount of alcohol in gram to identify how much a gram of alcohol the patient is taking per day and for how many years so that we can calculate the risk of patients uh, uh, the risk uh, the patient has for the development of liver cirrhosis coming to the clinical features so uh, if we talk about the clinical features in alcoholic fatty liver patient usually remains asymptomatic okay and they may have non-specific symptoms so it is difficult to diagnose a person with fatty liver until and unless ultrasonography of abdomen is done which will show accumulation of fat inside the liver so liver may be enlarged but non-tender so fatty liver stage the only finding may be hepatomegaly but it will be non-tender hepatomegaly now second stage alcoholic hepatitis what happens there will be non-specific symptoms two specific features of hepatic insufficiency may be there okay patient may have jaundice 
patient may have spider angioma or what we know as spider nevi there'll be hepatomegaly and it will be tender means liver will be enlarged and it will be painful to touch then ascites ascites we all know means accumulation of free fluid in the peritoneal cavity pyrexia there is fever or signs of encephalopathy encephalopathy is the involvement of uh, uh brain there'll be swelling of the brain cells leading to cerebral edema and all and this occurs as a complication of uh uh alcoholic liver disease or any liver disease per se uh when it is decompensated then patient will develop encephalopathy so these are the sign of signs which we may find in a patient of alcoholic hepatitis so jaundice spider nevi hepatomegaly which is tender ascites pyrexia there is fever and or signs of encephalopathy now what happens in cirrhotic stage when the patient develops liver cirrhosis what will be the symptoms the patient will have weakness then muscle wasting weight loss continuous mild fever the patient may have jaundice or pedal edema so these are important there may be spider angioma these things are important from uh, that point of view uh like only the alcoholic liver disease group of patients will have this group of symptoms okay other liver disease they will not have but because of alcohol abuse the patient may develop this kind of symptoms or signs we should say spider angioma enlargement of the parotid gland bilaterally gynecomastia okay enlargement of the breast tissue sparse body hair there will be sparse axillary and pubic hair white color nail there will be palmar erythema then gonadal atrophy testicular atrophy they are more common to alcoholic cirrhosis as i have just now mentioned liver may be enlarged with firm regular age or it may be contracted in cirrhotic stage later part the liver gets contracted it shrinks and it may become impalpable splenomegaly is progressive okay features of complications of liver cirrhosis like coagulopathy portal hypertension varicocele bleed ascites and hepatic encephalopathy these things may occur and may and patient may present with uh, features of complications of liver cirrhosis as well so these are important so these uh, will be the presentation of a patient with alcoholic liver cirrhosis okay now diagnosis how do we diagnose a case of liver cirrhosis or alcoholic liver disease we can say from liver function test lft stands for liver function test so there will be elevation of transaminases and alkaline phosphatases if we look at the ratio of ast and alt that is aspartate transaminases and alanine transaminases if we look at the ratio it is about 2 is to 1 okay with alt being less than 300 unit per liter so that is important this ratio is important ast and alt ratio is about 2.1 there will be raised ggt okay ggt is one more enzyme so there will be raised ggt hyperbilirubinemia it usually reflects the severity of hepatitis more severe the hepatitis more severe will be the hyperbilirubinemia if there is coagulopathy there will be prolongation of pt and inr and there will be hypoalbuminemia okay so in liver function test we'll get this findings there'll be elevation of ast alt alp all the enzymes ast alt ratio will be about 2 there'll be raised gamma gt hyperbilirubinemia prolongation of pt inr and hypoalbuminemia there is something known as discriminant function it is important to calculate the discriminant function if a patient is having alcoholic hepatitis it is a score it is also known as df score in short okay so it is a score which is based on prothrombin time and serum bilirubin and it is used to determine the short term prognosis in alcoholic hepatitis it also helps in determining the treatment as well so what is the formula of df it is 4.6 multiplied by patient's prothrombin minus control prothrombin in seconds plus serum bilirubin of the patient okay if the score is above 32 it is associated with 50% mortality within 2 months so this is very important from as not only from treatment but also from the prognostic point of view also because the score above 32 is uh, they do have a grave prognosis okay so this is about the discriminant function 
Now blood RE, routine blood examination, what we will get? We may get anemia and leukocytosis. Thrombocytopenia may be there due to direct toxicity of alcohol or it may be due to hypersplenism. We already have known that there will be progressive splenomegaly in case of liver cirrhosis. So, because of, hypers, uh, because of splenomegaly, there will be hypersplenism leading to thrombocytopenia. To anemia, leukocytosis and thrombocytopenia may be there. Okay. And then, uh, if we look at the electrolytes, there may be hyponatremia and hypokalemia as well. Liver biopsy is not routinely done. It is rarely needed for doubtful cases okay ultrasonography is very very useful okay it's very useful screening method it can detect hepatomegaly it can detect fatty liver and hepatitis in cirrhosis ultrasonography finding liver will be shrunken it will be irregular or nodular along with ascites dilated portal veins and splenomegaly these are signs of portal hypertension so there will be dilated portal veins there will be splenomegaly and ascites if the patient has already developed portal hypertension Doppler study can demonstrate changes in hepatic artery and portal vein. So, ultrasound is an important uh, screening method for the diagnosis of liver disease. Now, I will just name the complications of liver cirrhosis. I am not going to discuss about the uh, complications in this class because it is a, a vast topic. So, I will discuss about this complication in my upcoming classes. Portal hypertension is one of the very important complication of liver cirrhosis. Portal hypertension may lead to gastroesophageal varices, portal hypertensive gastropathy, splenomegaly leading to hypersplenism, ascites, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis is one of the complications again. Okay. Hepatorenal syndrome type 1 and type 2, hepatic encephalopathy, hepatopulmonary syndrome, portopulmonary hypertension, malnutrition, coagulopathy okay, due to Chlorine factor deficiency, fibrinolysis, thrombocytopenia, bone disease, there may be osteopenia, osteoporosis, osteomalacia and hematologic abnormality like anemia, hemolysis, thrombocytopenia and neutropenia. Okay. So, these are the complications of cirrhosis, liver cirrhosis. Okay. One more complication is there which is known as wernicke korsakoff syndrome or wernicke korsakoff psychosis. Okay, I'll discuss about it in my upcoming class, not today. Now, let's look at the management of alcoholic liver disease. Okay, how do we manage a case of alcoholic liver disease? Specifically, I'm going to talk about alcoholic hepatitis. Fatty liver stage or steatosis, they do not require any specific uh, drugs. Rather, they require abstinence of alcohol. If the patient uh, remains abstained from alcohol, then the changes will be reverted back the fatty liver will be reverted back to a normal uh, uh, liver okay so that is the main important thing in the fatty liver stage patients should uh, stop using alcohol the next stage is alcoholic hepatitis so alcoholic hepatitis alcohol abstinence is important nutritional support is very very important and then we need to look for discriminant function or df function if it is 32 or more or there is one more score that is mel score okay if it is more than 21 or 21 and if there is no gi bleed renal failure or pancreatitis we need to start with steroid okay corticosteroid prednisone 32 milligram or prednisone 40 milligram per orally for four weeks okay for 28 days we need to give again i'm telling alcoholic hepatitis alcohol abstinence is very very important nutritional support is important look for the discriminant function or mel score i will not go into the detail of mel score because it requires so many parameters to uh, calculate the MEL score. So MEL score 21 or more it can be calculated from different parameters and you can take uh, the help from uh, different calculators in uh, internet available in the internet and provided the patient do not have any GI bleed, renal failure or pancreatitis the patient should be put on steroid, corticosteroid, prednisolone 32 or prednisone 40 milligram for 4 weeks or 28 days. If the patient is intolerant, intolerant to uh, corticosteroids or there is contraindication of corticosteroid. We may use pentoxifilin as well. So the dose will be 400 mg 3 times a day. It is a non-selective phosphorylase inhibitor and decreases TNF synthesis. Okay. 
now in the stage of cirrhosis liver cirrhosis the last stage the important management will be the management of the complications the patient usually develops different complication at the stage of cirrhosis we need really need to look for the complications and we need to manage those complications which i'll discuss about in my upcoming classes and then uh, lastly there may be surgical management uh, which may be regarded as the end point so liver transplantation is indicated and decompensated alcoholic liver disease there are many aspects of liver transplantation everybody cannot undergo liver transplantation because someone has to fulfill the criteria for getting a liver transplant but it is one of the important modality in decompensated alcoholic liver disease so this was uh, uh about alcoholic liver disease in brief which i wanted to discuss today i hope uh the class was helpful please go through the class uh, again so you will uh, you know uh, you will really be benefited from the class thank you so much for attending the class